So this is a ETA 6497 uh, movement. It's a basic manual wind caliber with hour and minutes uh, mounted in the center and sub-seconds mounted at the nine o'clock side. It's a simple movement, good easy demonstration one. Um, so the parts that we have here, this is the setting mechanism. The uh, set lever jumper and bridge here is what differentiates between the setting and winding position. So you can set the time, push it into wind, And then in the center here, we have the cannon pinion. This is the clutch on this movement that uh, differentiates between um, when you set the watch, it slips. So the wheel is able to turn without turning the rest of the gear train. With, uh, and then when it's normally running, it turns freely and has the, uh, the uh, minute wheel mounted on it. Start disassembling this setting mechanism. Cannon pinion is friction down nice and tight, so I'm going to use this tool to grip it and pull it off. And then we'll see the bridge side of the movement. So that was the dial side, that's the, the side that actually has the dial um, on top of it. This is the bridge side or the back of the movement where basically all the uh, actual mechanisms are that uh, run the watch. It's only really a dynamically moving part of this watch too, so it's pretty eye-catching. And we have the escapement underneath there. This is a Swiss lever escapement. It's uh, the most common escapement. It's pretty much the industry standard these days. Um, this is what actually distributes energy from the barrel, the power mechanism on this watch, to the balance. And before taking that out, we need to let the power down. This uh, has uh, power on it right now. Okay, so I'm gonna let the power down. get a shot of that. That's the pallet fork. This is the half of the escapement. The other half is the escape wheel, which I'll pull out in a second. So now we've got the gear train, which is, um, this is the uh, system that carries energy from the barrel to the escapement. It's a very simple four wheel gear train. You can see the rubies and bearing surfaces there. And here's the gear train. We have the escape wheel, which is the other half of the escapement. This is a wheel with um, asymmetrical teeth. And then we have the fourth wheel, and this has got a long pivot that goes through the dial side, and this is the, uh, the wheel that has the second hand mounted on it in this watch. The third wheel. And then the center wheel is married, uh, it's mounted under the barrel bridge. We'll get there next. So, anyway. so I take out the screw for the ratchet wheel and then also the crown wheel here. This wheel actually has a reverse threaded screw. It's a left-handed screw. So um, it, it rotates left-handed because if it were the other direction, when you wind the watch, it would actually uh, have a tendency to want to unscrew the screw. And if a screw comes out while the watch is operating, um, it's basically gonna stop functioning. Can it cause some serious damage having parts floating around in there. Um, and basically from a customer standpoint, if a screw comes out on your watch, it's gonna stop and you're gonna bring it back and you're gonna be very upset. Okay, so here's our center wheel now able to come out. And then the barrel. This is the wheel that houses the mainspring. So this is the power source on the watch. And we can open it up and see the mainspring here. So there's the spring coiled in with an arbor in the center. Basically this arbor has a hook on it. So as you wind the watch, it hooks the end of the spring and coils it up and stores the energy. So this is the unwound state with the spring on the outside. When it's wound, the spring will all be occupying the inner uh, space of the barrel. 
I'm gonna remove the arbor. And I'll feed this mainspring out slowly. And that's a 647. Very, very simple mechanism. Keeps great time. You do all your adjustments. Like if this is a watch we're actually servicing, anything that needed repairing uh, would be done during disassembly. And then the watch would go into the cleaner. Everything would get cleaned um, and then uh, reassembled and oiled when it comes out.